What is going on, Remess here, and welcome back to our episode of Cars and Castles Known Combos, where today we are taking on a request that I have had for quite a while now, something that I haven't done, but I figure now is a good time to, of course, show it to you, kind of talk about it now, and that is Dragons. I haven't done a lot of showcase of Dragons here on the channel recently, uh, but I have wanted to kind of go back in and explore the archetype a little bit more. So I did put together kind of a uh, standard, or at least what I consider kind of a standard blue yellow wind dragon deck uh something that you kind of might see as the go-to for players that are new to the archetype or kind of want to explore this is probably where i recommend you kind of put forward or at least if you want to build up a dragon deck this is a sort of a, g a good or decent start to kind of put yourself in so that way you could of course expand outward eventually when you have a hold of this deck and expand more outward but of course this is the wind dragon deck so with that being let's go ahead and jump into the deck list and show you guys how this one works so here is our deck list for the Wind Dragons. Now, as you can see, of course, tons of dragons everywhere. Of course, the foundation, the backbone of this deck is going to be with your dragons. Yenaroth, Green Drake, Aeroth, uh, Faithful Drake, Ice Drake, Dragon Knight even, all providing sort of the dragon aspects to the deck. And of course, being reinforced by Dragon Siege and Dragon Temple, two very good support cards for the dragon archetype. Now, of course... That being said, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack on Dragon Siege. However, I will admit, for how much slack I've given it over the past few months, it has had its uses. I have seen matches where it, of, co it can of course, comes out of nowhere, surprises your opponent, and creates these supercharged drakes that often survive longer on the board and force opponents to kind of put more resources into the dragon just to get rid of it, where they could have been using that or those same resources to build up sort of a... Uh, a push or a, uh, a siege, if you will. I guess maybe siege isn't the right word, but that was the first thing that kind of came to my mind. Not that it's right there on the screen in front of you, but regardless, uh, again, it is making some good progress. So I did decide to include it here, but of course, that being shared with Lightning Blade as well to provide some uh, good buffs, some good uh, spell buffs to the dragons. However, of course, like the name states, this is more of a, or at least the uh, the punch in this deck comes more with the wind aspects or the uh, push aspects. You, of course, have Aeroth, which is sort of the, you know, foundation of what you want to get. Uh, you want to have a lot of Drakes out, buffed by Dragon Siege and Temple, kind of swarm in and do a lot of burst damage to your opponent. That's, that's the ideal, of course. And, of course, you also have Wind Mage in here as well at two copies to kind of help you stall if you need the time. Uh, it's pushback is a bit useful, uh, kind of what you're using the card for. Not really for the 2-2 range unit. You are using it to kind of just stall, give yourself some time to uh, build up your big Drakes. Uh, and of course, Wind Mage as the range unit can be a bit of a, a nuisance to your opponent. Um, you know, they force them to use a burn or two, perhaps, you never know. Uh, and of course, that being paired with the global buffs in here as well, Armory and Blacksmith be included alongside the Dragon Temple, provides some great support for all the units into this deck. But of course, aside from the dragons in there, we are running some pretty standard stuff uh, in terms of support units. Uh, Lumberjack, Dwarven Miner, like I mentioned, Blacks with Armory already. Barbarian is a solid 4 drop just because he's a bit more healthier than everything in this deck. Northland's Ranger to provide the same reason. And of course, Tarius and Craxus, both of these two cards providing some draw support that the deck kind of needs. Tarius is a bit more risky than Craxus. Of course, it is a fragile unit. It can get easily burned off. But if you have things like Armory out, you have a, probably good, you have a pretty good chance of it sort of, uh, surviving longer on the board. But, of course, Kraxus is also a more reliable draw source in the deck as well. But Taurus does some good work as well. Um, that's kind of pretty much it, I believe. Pretty straightforward stuff. Again, the idea here, building up a lot of drakes here. Uh, and, of course, sending them forward to, uh, of course, do a lot of big burst damage at a time. And, of course, that's kind of what you see a lot of the blue-yellow dragon deck kind of do. Maybe not all of them, because some of them don't like the latest Aeroth incarnation. But I will say a good amount of them do tend to build up sort of this, uh, a lot of drakes on the board, burst them with their off, and that's a lot of damage looking on the, you know, on the opponent's side of the board. So, uh, with that being said, probably enough about me talking about the deck. Let's go ahead and get into a matchup and see how this deck actually uh, works. 
Alright, so for our match here, we do start off pretty well with the Ice Drake and Dragon Surge. I'm going to go ahead and swipe away the Dragon Siege. And the Faithful Drake is actually going to give us a nice uh, curve here to start us off. We'll go ahead and pop our Dragon Surge right away, giving us a Green Drake. Alright, now what I'm looking for, but we'll take it. And uh, we'll see how this goes from there. Uh, let's open up. Uh, we do have a Miner. Uh... Let's go with the Faithful Drake. It does have a bit more health to start us off here, and we'll push it a little bit more aggressively uh, to kind of see how he opens up, how he responds to us. He's not going to, it looks like, interestingly enough. So we're going to go ahead and push another, well, we'll push an Ice Drake this time, kind of open up the idea that, hey, now we have Drakes. Meanwhile, holding off the Dragon Search, so that way we can probably pair it off with Dwarf Miner. Uh, let's see. All right, finally going to play a card now. Dark Bender. All right, so a little tricky for us. Uh, hmm. Let's go ahead and pop Dragon Search. We will get that. Let's go ahead and hold off a little bit here. Yeah, here's here's what we'll do. We'll set up our Dwarven Miner to be a bit more aggressive here. We'll hold off the Ice Drake for a moment. Uh, so that way, when the time comes, he's going to throw out another Dark Bender. Uh -oh. Okay, well, how about this? We'll throw our Shadow Drake more uh, for stealth over here. Meanwhile, push up our Dwarven Miner to chip away a little bit more at the castle. And here's where we're going to have our Aeroth provide us with a lot of value here. Uh, and it's what you kind of see with a lot of Dragon decks nowadays. Or at least the classical uh, blue-yellow. Saving up for a big push to kind of storm in Aeroth and show off here. Do a lot of burst damage. Normally I would like to do this when there's more of a, a game-ending scenario here. When I can, of course, push this just all the way down. Uh, he's going to throw out Flame Prince, Lumberjack as well, probably to block. Oh, okay, he's looking for a... Uh... Okay, he's looking for the Shadow Drake, which is over here. So he thinks he's safe here. Same with the Dark Bender up here, but look at this. We just throw an Aeroth. Boom, these guys are immediately down. One Dark Bender down over here. Second one down over here. And you, we can even chop down the Lumberjack here thanks to the Aeroth. And now we're in a pretty good position to threaten his board here. None of our Drakes took any damage over here. And all he's got is a Flame Prince on defense. A range unit's not going to help him here. So he's going to have to figure out a way to kind of maybe burn us. He does have a lot of cards in his hand though. Uh, that shouldn't be forgotten. But hopefully we can have him waste a couple of burns here so that way our Tarius can come out and provide us with some uh, additional cards. Because we are running low here, just a little bit. So I ideally would like to get Loremaster out here to start giving us some cards. Vampire going to come out on his end. Alright, not a bad card. It will give uh, Lifesteal a pretty good uh, opportunity here. But he is going to sack the Flame Prince for now. So here is... well, hmm. Alright, well here's what we can do for now. Let's throw out Aeroth a bit more aggressively here. And for now, keep Flame Prince right over there. And of course, uh, let's actually throw the Northlands Ranger. I do want to push some aggression, a bit more aggression, onto our opponent here. Now he's in this position where he can't use his Vampire just yet. Swordsman, okay, I expected that, but ultimately not going to do a whole lot for him, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit our Vampire friend up here for a bit of damage, just like that. And of course, Aeroth down here. Shadow Drake down here. We can even... Uh, yeah, we can even throw the green Drake out here. That'll kill off our swordsman or our swordsman friend over there. And throw an Ice Drake so that way we can keep our green Drake buff even if the Shadow Drake dies. And this is a pretty textbook, pretty standard elementary matchup uh, for dragons here. This is kind of what you want to do with the dragons. Uh, we do still have a couple more options left in case he pulls fastballs on us. Yenneroth for our massive board freeze. Tarius to kind of rebuild our card count if our opponent, you know, needs to, or if he decides to, like, come back a bit. We need to build up our card supply. We have Tarius. Uh, he'll throw out Keeper of the Doorway plus School of Magic, so that's going to be not as strong value on the Shadow Drake, and yet he's going to surrender not enough to kill the Shadow Drake. So again, yeah, pretty standard textbook elementary match, and that was a pretty good demonstration, in my opinion, of what the Dragon deck needs to do, what they kind of need to bring to the table. We didn't see things like the Dragon Temple or the Armory that were in the deck for more buffs, but ideally, if the game goes longer, you have a chance of pulling that one to make your, great, uh, to make your Drake stronger, which, of course, in turn, provides some more uh, power to the Drakes that you kind of send forward. 
and reinforce the idea that you want to send them in for a lot of burst damage with an air off, with an air off push. So yeah, uh, overall pretty happy with how that ma uh, how that match went. Again, pretty textbook, pretty elementary on how the dragons are supposed to run, and uh, yeah, I would say uh, not too shabby indeed. And with that being said, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of Known Comments. Let me know what you guys think by leaving a like on the video, sharing it, sharing it with your friends, bleh, and of course leaving a comment down below what you guys think of the Dragon Deck Showcase here, and Dragons in general, if you guys maybe have some different opinions on a Dragon Deck or what should be included. Let me know, again, in those comments section below. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Help show your support of the channel if you are new or haven't done so already by clicking the subscribe button at no additional cost to you. And with that being said, guys, that's going to do it for me for now. So until next time, stay gaming.